Have your way, Holy Spirit. For it's in the Lord Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Come on, y'all. Let's praise and worship the Lord. Come on, everybody stand. Everybody stand. It's okay to come up to the altar, too. Come on, y'all. Took a late stroll on a low tide for the lame folk on a boat ride. Came so that we won't die. Gave hope to the same folk that were hating on me, a dope guy. Most tried, but it don't fly. He the lamb and the goat, true and living God with a capital G on it. Me and KB lean on it, point blank, period, with a T on it.
Welcome to the New Heart Covenant Church where we worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Truly, we know that the Lord is here. Amen? Amen. My brothers and sisters, there's a lot of lost souls that need to be saved in this world. And it is our responsibility to preach the word to them. We can't just be coming to church. Can't be a religious people. We got to be a people that's on fire for God. And tell them about Jesus. Because Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. And Jesus is the life. And no one comes unto the Father but by Christ Jesus. Because he is the door. So we need to ask God to use us. Because the harvest is plentiful. But the laborers are few. And we ask God to send more laborers, send more people that will go out to the harvest and preach the word of God on your jobs, in your families, in your neighborhood, the stores you go to. Be friendly to somebody and they'll know you're different because nobody wants to be friendly towards a stranger anymore. Nobody wants to open the door for a woman that's, that's struggling to get in store, in the store or outside the store. We need to be ambassadors for Christ God's going to do something amazing today God's going to do something amazing today I'd like to welcome everybody here this morning because we know God is here we need to tell people that we know God is here. We can't be afraid to tell people about Jesus. You can't be afraid of what they're going to say behind your back. Because we are mighty men and women of God. And we got the ministry of reconciliation. Amen? In a minute, we're going to ask our... Men to come up for offering in the New Our Covenant Church. You know we only do one offering. We don't beg anybody because we know God always blesses our church. So we're not begging you to give. It's an opportunity, a privilege for you to have an opportunity to give unto our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for the building of his kingdom. Amen? But before that takes place, I, I just want to share a few things with you. All right? Never come here thinking that you know what the service is going to be like. Never be missing church and say, well, it's a quarter to 11, so I know what they're doing. It's 11 o'clock. They're, they're into their praise and worship because service is not even going to go that way today. God is not predictable. God is moving in the midst of us. And I know he's here. So with that being said, I'm going to ask our men to come up for our offering so we can continue to be led by Holy Spirit in the direction he wants us to go. We got a lot of members that are depending on YouTube. You know, YouTube was good in its season. When the pandemic came, they had us on lockdown. We couldn't have service. They wanted us to protect our brothers and sisters and our family. But now we're not on lockdown. Of course, we're taking all the precaution, precautionary measures. We have a machine back there that when you walk through there, it, it cleans you up. This place is cleaned every week thoroughly. Not just with Lysol, but chemicals that are re uh, recommended by the CDC to clean sanctuaries and big buildings. We have that here. We also take your temperature. We also read your mask, ask you to re wear your mask. So we're, we're protected. And above all, we have Holy Spirit protecting us. Amen? So... I don't know if you know somebody that just don't want to come to church no more, but encourage them to come. Let them know that Holy Spirit is doing something in the midst of us. Amen? Let us pray. Father in heaven, I know that you are the author and the finisher of our faith. We thank you for everything that you have given us. We thank you for the way you're going to be moving in this service today. Continue to have your way in us and through us. For it's in the Lord Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Sunday evening last Sunday, 
We had an awesome time in the Lord at Alfred's homegoing service. Many people were saved. And there was a gang war taking place right in that funeral home. And it's amazing how God used us on that day in Alfred's story and his testimony. Some people left, but most people stayed. You could feel a spirit that was trying to distract, but God was victorious. And Alfred came out of a, an event we have here at church called Smash. Smash. Sinners making a statement historically. And every one of us in here are sinners. Some are sinners that are not saved and some are sinners saved by grace. For it is, big, for it is by grace that we are saved through faith. And that not of ourselves. It is a gift from God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. So there's nobody in here that's better than somebody else. If you're saved, we're all on the same, same page. Amen? So Alfred came out of smash. So did Randy. Came out of smash. Amen. And it was said, we had a church member that said, why are we having smash? And we told them because it's for lost souls. It's for people that don't know Jesus. And we're tired of cramming Christianity down people's throat and not listening to what they got to say. So we allowed them to go over on the other side and say exactly what was on their mind. And they said it. But we told them what was spoken to us to share with them. And I remember when Randy was at Smash, the things he was saying was hardcore. But look at him now. Last Sunday night, God used him. I felt the anointing when it came on you, my brother. I knew. I said, mm, there it is right there. So both Alfred and Randy received the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. And both of them were baptized right here in this church. Some of you say, well, where's the baptism pool? We got a big one. We bring it in here, we fill it up with water, and it's beautiful. You got to get a ladder, a little step ladder to get in it. So it's deep. You're going to be fully submerged. And when my brother Randy came out of there, and when my brother Alfred came out of there, they were changed. And some people say, well, I didn't see much change in Alfred. Sometimes we don't bear fruit in certain seasons. But he bare fruit last Sunday night. Because of his death, many people heard a message from God that they needed to hear. So Alfred is our brother. And I don't say was because his soul still lives. It's this that dies, this flesh. But the soul lives on. Either, either in eternity in heaven or eternity in hell. We are experiencing Holy Spirit revival in this church. God's doing something. And we want people that's going to be committed and sold out for Jesus. We don't want people half-hearted. And when you call yourself a Christian, there's a responsibility that comes with that. When you call yourself a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, there's a responsibility that comes with that. And that is to lead others to Jesus. To tell others about the witness of your life, that Jesus came into your life and that you know him. God is moving in our midst and we want to keep in step with him. There was a young man Sunday night by the name of Lucas. I guess most people call him Luke. And when he came up to the podium, I was standing there and he says, where is your church? So I thought he wanted to attend our church. Gave him the address. He said, you know, I'm a member of a church. The name of the church I go to is named, it's called Brave. He said, but y'all are experiencing Holy Spirit revival in your church. Lucas, a young man, I say about 20, maybe 20, maybe in his teens, 
came up to that podium and told us what's happening in this church and people don't feel it and people don't realize that God is moving in the midst of our church in a mighty way. Holy Spirit has ascended on our church and we want to take it for granted. No, we can't. If we know he's here, we got to praise him like we know he's here. Just don't go through the motions. Because he's worthy of my praise. So when he told me that I had him come over to all the young men that were part of the service, it was Randy, Elder Rico, Rolando, Zeke was there, and we were all in this circle. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit started talking to them about what's going on in this church. Somebody, that's holy, that's God himself talking through somebody that don't know what's going on in this church, but said it. He said, I don't know what, I don't know why I came up here, he said. But I know what God told me to say. Don't take that lightly. And if you know Holy Spirit revivals here, you should be excited about coming to church. Excited about being in the midst of his people. To praise him and to worship him in spirit and in truth. So as I said, you can't predict what Holy Spirit is going to do in our service. Also, our brother Alexander, I called him Alex. I said, bro, can I call you Alex? See, yeah, you'll see it. You'll meet him this afternoon. He came up to me and said, the devil was punched down tonight. How did you say it, Alex? You said, he, he would, you said it today when you came here. That's what he said was happening Sunday night. He said, this, this is what it's all about right here. Gang war. Spiritual gang war. And he knew a spiritual gang war was taking place in that funeral home. So enough with the introductions. Let us begin some spiritual gang warring this morning. We need to pray for our church, man. We need to pray for our church. Because I'm telling you, you know my heart. Y'all know my heart. You know I love you. There's a lot of people just playing around. They ain't serious. When Alex come up here and tell you how serious this warfare is, and how serious it is, how serious the devil is in trying to destroy us. Maybe you'll get it. People don't put God first no more, man. We don't, we don't put God first. And he's been preaching to us, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these other things shall be added unto you. You'll never get a church. You'll never get from me a church that's going to be commercial. I don't know how to do that. All I can do is be for real with you. All I can do is pour my heart out to you. All I can do is let Holy Spirit use me to show us that God is here. We're not on no program here. We're not on a, a schedule. But we should come here and worship in God with all our, all our hearts and all our souls. Amen. Not thinking nothing else. I ain't faking it until I make it. This is real as I can get, man. So we're going to start with inspiration from Smash. And then we will have our brother Alex come up and share what Christ, Holy Spirit, has done in his life. So with that being said, I believe Punchline, he's going to start us off. Punchline, come on up here, brother. Punchline was there, too. Our brother Zeke. Man, Zeke, Holy Spirit came upon you when you started performing you know, you, 
Zeke said, I don't think I can do it. I called him early. I said, we might ask you to come up and represent Smash. He said, I don't know. I don't know, Pastor. I don't know if I can do that. But when he got up there, y'all knew it was God. It was God, brother. It was God. Good morning. How y'all doing? I just want to say it feels good to be in church, y'all. I grew up a pastor kid, but streets kind of took over, so it's like I want, I, I knew I didn't want to play with God and be in the streets at the same time, so I really kind of stopped going to church. But when I came here this morning and seeing y'all worship, like it just it did something to me. Like I really miss being in that atmosphere. You understand? So I love. I just want to pastor. I thank you for letting me be here. I just want to say I miss my brother Fred. Like this kind of this gonna be kind of hard to do this like without him, bro, because. When I first came to Smash, like, I didn't even know it was a church event. I just thought it was an open mic. So the music I had to come do, it was like, I was kind of embarrassed to do it, knowing it was a pastor and stuff, yeah, and I still did it. But he was right in the front row, like, jamming. I didn't even know he was a pastor until somebody told me, like, to just not feel no judgment on, you know what I'm saying, what I presented. And he still told me, even that day, he was like, man, God going to use you for something. He definitely gonna use you for something. I met Zeke and Fred and Rico and them, and it's like everybody just embraced me. And even though I haven't been to the church, but I still keep up with them. And it's like you go to events and stuff, and people tell you, "Oh yeah, yeah, bro, link up with you," but they don't really. They, it never happens. But they took me in as like a brother, not like a brother, as in Christ, but just a brother, brother. And I remember one time, like even after the thing, like Fred just came and whispered, and he's like, "Bro." I love you. You know, if anybody try you, I kill him, right? I was like, damn, bro, ain't you? Ain't this church? <laughs> but I felt that because we came kind of from the same background. So I know, I know, you know what I'm saying, what he meant. Like he really did love the Lord, but he ain't play at the same time. He ain't play at the same time. And I just want to, you know, you go ahead and put that on, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we so we like to support each other, so that's why we up here. I with appreciate our, with y'all brother. boys, man. And uh, he been he been with Smash since day one, man. He always came through. And um, Fred, he was a, a instrumental part of Smash too, man. It, y'all don't know how much he meant meant to Smash, man. Yes. So um, Zeke, of course, brother, yes, we love bro. you, man. That's my big bro, man. Let's go. So y'all hear y'all say Smash? We need to hear y'all say Smash, Smash. That's right. Let's ride. Yeah, turn me up, so.
you before I could see you. Before Kim and Mike had conceived you, yeah. I knew you give gospel to people. Come on. You have been stuck in your ways, yeah. but now I need you to let me through. Right. Your life has been covered Come in on. shade, but now I need you to be seen through. Yeah. Tell them how you could have paid the price. Tell them how I already saved your life. Tell them how you only lost your eye when really you were supposed to lose your life. Show them the anger and pain. Tell them you never want to change. Tell them no weather the storm. When you turn your back on me, on. the devil can never get near you. Yeah. All I really wanted is your love, and I don't believe that I ask for much. And I don't believe you were lost cause, so I promise I'm not giving up. Yeah. So what is my purpose here? What am I supposed to do? Yeah. Why did you save me, Lord? I know I live because of you. Say what is my purpose here? What, my purpose? what am I supposed to do? Yeah. Say why did you save me, Lord? Yeah. I know yeah. I live because yeah. of you. Say what is my purpose here? What am I supposed to do? Say why did you save me, Lord? I know I live because of you. Say what is my purpose here? What am I supposed to do? Say why did you save me, Lord? I know I live because of you. Hey, baby, DK, 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 DK. Brought a 
different Ain't no nine to five for me today I was brought a different Tell my mama I gotta get paid I was brought a different I ain't do that shit there Nah, I was brought a different Hey yo, growing up, growing up Man, Will's never be the favorite son But we got him up, we got him up Look at me and my mom, your favorite son Money went quick, then the money went fast I ain't gon' lie, he ain't really never last Even though a nigga look clean Probably with the Still had a camera with the clip Yo, yo and Turn the beat off, huh You can turn the beat off I don't need no instrumental now I feel like a wrestler Trying to wrestle demons out The devil gave direction, but God gave me a better route And now I'm woo, that just me stepping the devil out And you can look me in my eyes, see I'm not a coward and I know you looking down, cause you part of ours. Got baptized together, Holy Spirit shower. God Fred. turned you to an angel, cause he knew we needed power. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Love you, friend. That's right, that's right. That's right. Let's go. Music, music. The art of sound, in time that expresses ideas and emotions in significant form. Turn it up. 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 That's right. That's music. I got the sound blowing up in your face. Hey, all around the world, they wanna do the same thing. Metaphorical, astronomical tendencies. Nine in the ship, out of space is my industry. Ricochets, spitting words like it's bullet trees. Water, the spirit, hold high like artillery. Smash is the only team that I run it with. Can we all get along? Come on, turn it up, man. We play ball, kid. Word up, Sonny and Long. It's a war zone, spiritual. Me and I, we play ball, kid. Word up, Sonny and Long. It's a war zone, spiritual. Me and I, hey. Only time will tell. Either heaven or hell. Cause that bullet from that gun is looking for some me. I got that heat for your soul. Jesus in control. He's always on the road, even when I rolled up. I got high, cause I thought that I could reach the sky. I was fly with my checks and my Jordan zone. You see the appearance that was running into. And I find a way to doubt you Living by your grace and we still don't know you You play bomb, kid, word up, sound the alarm It's a war zone, spiritual Be and now we play bomb, kid, word up, sound the alarm It's a war zone, spiritual Be and now we go S to the N to the O to the P Satan's number one enemy, yes that's we S to the N to the O to the E Satan's number one enemy, yes that's we Okay, Jalala! Y'all got power? Yeah, Y'all got power? Let me hear y'all say smash! I got it! Smash! I got it! Smash! I got it. Smash! Uh, smash. Uh, smash. Uh, That's right. I got it! Hey. I got the power! 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 We 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 got the power! Power's in the blood of the people who believes him. You could have the power if you only just receive him. I know the man that walked the earth. He walked the land. <laughs> come on, okay, come on, let's go. Power's in the blood of the people who believes him. You could have the power if you only just receive him. I know the man that walked the earth. He walked the land and healed the curse to show how much a savior's worth. They crucified him without no hearse. They couldn't do him any worse. It's clear y'all choose the devil first. The wrong power. I stand on top is like a tower. A mind is strong. Your people couldn't stop the power. You're strapped up like you ready to go into battle. Don't play with me cause I'm a beast when I'm on that saddle. Tell the charge for my angels when we in that battle. The carpenter said I'm more than a conqueror. It's destiny with my Holy Spirit next to me. I load him up with prayers like it's ammo for my fortified. I'm fortified, immortalized, you mortalized. I got the truth in my veins, ain't no comfort. Now everybody hands up, go and let your power go. I can't be broken no more. Put your hands up, spirit of me. That's right. You got the power, put your hands up, come on. Now everybody hands up, come on. Power up and let's go. I need your love, oh Lord. Bring that your love, spirit of me. Come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. When the enemy tried to come and step on. Hey! 
everybody nah, nah, nah. I remember when my mama said that I can be oh. A warrior living like holy yeah. Cold is dead fast without a tear oh. The strength is perfect, no more worries and no fear Now everybody hands up, hey, yeah. go and let your power hey. go Our brother friend smash we here sinners making a statement historically everybody's a sinner you can be saved today all you got to do is trust and believe come on smash I listen to the Holy Spirit, you know, just be listening to him, you know. Some powerful words. Testimony being spoken. Yeah, my sister. God is good, man. So, Alex, we're going to give you this mic, bro. We're going to let Holy Spirit use you. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way. Yes, that's it, bro. I'm with you. I want to start off with a little prayer right quick. Amen. Father God, I just want to thank you for another day of life, another day of your many blessings, yes, Lord. and another day to, to just be in your presence and, and get to do your will. Um, I want to cancel everything that's not from you that's right, that's right. and just speak through me, Lord God, so I could touch somebody or somebody's family member that's going yeah. through the same things that I was going through. I want to thank you for every opportunity you've given me to, to just share my testimonies and just thank you for keep blessing my life and never leave and never abandon me, Lord God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. All right, so my name is Alex. I'm um, 37 years old. Uh, by the way, Alfred was a really, really good friend of mine for like 20 some years. Um, I grew up a normal life, man. I had a, I come from a good home. My family, my mom and dad are still married, 45 years. They've been, they, they're Christians, 30 years strong. Um, and, um, you know, I come from a really good home. And um, as I got into high school, uh, I started choosing the, I started getting into drugs and choosing the, the gang life. Then um, I went hard with it. You know, at a certain age, I grew up in the church, but when I became a teenager, my mom left it up to me and my brother to keep on that path. I got attracted to the, to the street life, and I went 100% with it, 1,000% with it. So then, at 18 years old, I go to prison. I go and I do four years in prison, I come out, you don't escape still drugs in there, fighting, all this and that. I come out, I start working, construction. I'm looking at all these old people and they're talking about like, yeah, I've been doing this for 40 years. I about to retire in 10 years. I'm like, man, I ain't doing this for no 40 years, bro. I left and I went, I started slanging dope. As soon as I started selling 
dope again. I mean, I started, started selling dope. My addiction starts getting even worse. It gets worse. I'm doing that for like about seven years. And yeah, I got, I get, you know, it, it gave me things, but it took it right back. It took it right back. Yeah, I had a chain. Bam, I told my car, I had to pawn the chain. Go get a car, you know. So then I go, I get locked up again. I do like about another four years. And you got, did about 13 months in confinement for riots, gangs. I was part of the Latin Kings, real big gang all over the country. And I never wanted to, to hold position. I always wanted to be a soldier because I got used to putting in work. And the more work I kept putting in, the more comfortable I got and the more comfortable I got with it. And it was just like the people, I would be around people that was like, they would look at me and they're like, yo, you, you, you crazy, bro. You about to catch a life sentence doing the things you do. I said, bro, listen, just back up. I got this. I got this. You're going to just mess up everything. And, and, and I will be so comfortable just riding around being a two-time convicted felon with a, with a pistol in my lap. It just uh, I felt at ease. And I've done so much work for the enemy. And it hasn't gotten me nowhere. But in prison, I got shot. Oh, when I got out of prison the second time, I got shot with an AR-15. I got 17 surgeries. I lost a piece of my colon, a piece of my intestine, and it came out through my pelvis, missing a piece of my bone. Seven months after that, I get shot again. My brother dies, a brother of mine dies. That bl bullet hit my liver, blew my liver in half. They put my liver back together. Made it through that one. I did good, I was good for like about five years. Then I got into addiction real bad. Real, real, real bad. Um, crack. Crack brought me down to my knees, bro. And I was hooked on it for like about a good four years, bro. And I recently got baptized about five months ago. And, um, you know, with my brother Kenzie here, my brother Roosty over there, with a purple hat, and um, and um, and my brother Diamond, the one that be doing the music, like I told you, like how y'all be banging on the enemy, man. So then, um, it's crazy because they read me a scripture from my 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 fa I got my favorite scripture from my father, which was Philippians four thirteen. I could do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But then, as they gave me this scripture, somebody read me a scripture because they're like, I see a warrior in you, bro. You got to put on Ephesians 6, the full, the, the full armor of God. So I was reading that, and that, that, that's, my, that, that's my scripture right now. That's my scripture right there. And, yo, I've seen, and right before it talks about the full, arm, the full armor of God, it talks about that unseen world. All right, crack, I seen that world. I seen demons, bro. I've chased them. I've chased them, bro. Like, and then it's so crazy because I've blown a thousand dollars in two days smoking that and then find a way, like cussing the devil out. Like, yeah, I felt good. I got a thousand dollars. Yeah, let's go party. Ah, ah. And then I run out of it. And then I'm like, bro. Somehow find a way to get $40 to get some more. After I don't just cussed him out, felt good again. Then he makes me feel like crap again once, once, the, once the, the dope is over with. And I was just battling that, battling that, battling that. And that brought me down to my knees, bro. Like, I really lost my strength. Forget going to prison. Forget getting shot. I don't shot people. I don't done home invasions. I don't kidnap people. I've done it. I've done it. My DC number is M39616. Y'all can look me up. Um, I became comfortable doing work 
for the enemy, bro. And it doesn't get you nowhere. It don't get you nowhere. Yeah, I got stripes. What those stripes got me? 17 surgeries, two stints up the road in prison. Before I let go of my addiction, he almost tried to take my life again. I was in the trap house. I started off 2021 crashing my car, totaling a brand new total, uh, I total, total loss, a brand new Camry I had. <coughs> Got surgery on my knee. I bought a street bike after that. I crashed at 90 miles an hour. Got up from under the car, got up from under the car, picked up the bike, got on the bike and took off. How do you figure that? God. Amen. It's God. So I got to the point that I had another friend of mine overdose once I got clean. Um, and I've just lost so many friends in this last year and a half. I'm going on like a count of like 10. So the, the enemy's doing his work. He's out there. He's out there. But like my dog Diamond say, it's Christ gang. We got to bang on this enemy. And um, he gave me my, Christ gave me my strength back. He gave me my strength back. And now the devil's hating right now. Because I, I ain't doing his work no more. He knows my name, and when I pray, I want him to hear me pray. And I get attacked every day, harder and harder. Look, I, I'm a person that I'm very vengeful. I'm, I'm very, I have vindictive ways. I'm the person that if you did me wrong, I, you know, everybody says leave it up to God. No, no, no. I want her to go and do harm to you. I ask God every day to take that away from me. And it's, that's what I struggle with. That's really what I struggle with, that and my pride. Pride, those things have gotten me almost killed, man. When I got shot the first time, it's crazy because as I couldn't breathe, I, tell, I go like this, I go, damn, I can't believe this. You know, I ain't going to curse this. Kill me. God, please get me through this. Lights out. Lights out. I woke up, my mom was praying outside the hospital with her church, and um, I snapped out of a coma like two weeks later. Boom. I'm under police custody in the hospital for like 40 days, 30 some days, until the fi finally nobody wanted to press charges. He got me out of it. Through that whole time, I almost died like five times from septic shock and this and that. And it's just, it's just, like my like 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 Diamond says in one of his songs, man, he gives me chance after chance after my 900 chances weren't worth it. And yo, his grace and the mercy that he's had over me, bro, is just so is unmeasurable, man. Like he's never abandoned me, he's never left me. At the end of the day, when I've seen all these demons and all this stuff like that, high on drugs. I always knew I had God on my side. I'm never, I've never been scared of them, bro. Never been scared of those demons, bro. Never. Never, because I always knew I had them on my side for my family. My family's always prayed for me. I just got lost. This street, these, these streets, they, they eat you up. They, they will eat you up. And so I'm going on five months and some change clean. I've been, I've been, um, I've been in my, I've been in my word. I've been in my word. I've been praying every day. I got a lot of support from my brothers right here, Roosty, Diamond, and it's just like, like um, the dude that sang first. He said it's, it's just it's just so awesome. It feels so good. My mom don't told me. She's like, yo, it's been so long since I see you with a smile on your face. And it just feels so good right now to, to just do his will, man. Like, I'm not perfect. I still fail. I, I still fall short. But I try, you know. I, I, give, I, give, 
I, I just, I got to do my part. And by me doing my part, he don't bless me so much in these last five months. And like I said before, he don't save my life so many times that I don't even, like, not in a bad way. I don't need no more blessings, bro. But I know he's going to keep on blessing me. You know what I'm saying? He's already just done so much for me that, you know, it, it, I, I don't have words for it. It's just his love, bro, his mercy, you know, his grace. And I just want to just every opportunity I get so I can share my testimony, I'm going to do it. I want to do his will. I want to be less like me and more like him. Hallelujah. And, and yeah, man, he, he, I just, I'm just so grateful, bro. I'm, I'm grateful to be here. I'm grateful for y'all having me here so I can share my testimony. Um, I love y'all. And we're going to just keep banging on this enemy, bro. Because that's what it's about. I'm, I'm at war now with the devil. I ain't doing his work no more. I ain't doing his work no more. He's mad right now because he know he had a, he had a soldier. Not no more. So he pissed, and I don't care that he's mad. So with that being said, I love y'all. God bless y'all. Thank y'all so much for having me. Stay here a second. I got a word from the Lord when you were giving your testimony. He said, too much is given, much is required. And you said, man, he's forgiven me like 900 times. I, he don't need to bless me anymore. But he says that as many times I, I have blessed you, there's a lot required. And you are, you are doing what I asked you to do. These are the requirements, giving the testimonies, leading young people that are going that direction to the Lord. And see, we can't be afraid to tell people about Jesus. No matter what kind of background we come from, these are the testimonies that we need. These are the people we need to reach. I don't know what y'all doing. L let me ask you. I don't know what you're doing as far as witnessing. But these are the Alex could have been a young man that we came to early and showed him the way like his parents did. But he might have needed someone on his same level to say we can do this. A Zeke that comes up all tatted with smash saying the Lord wants to speak to you, my brother. And I know Alex was hard. And Alex probably said, man, you know, I ain't with this God thing. What's up with you? But you got to pray for him. You got you to gotta, you gotta step out. Sunday night, there was a lot of people, young people in that sanctuary that were headed in that direction. And, and, and there was a, a, an adult that led a bunch of young people out of the place that they needed to hear that. But because it was different, well, I don't want to hear that. Because many of you came in here today and expecting the, the same old, same old. You got something different. Holy Spirit is speaking through Alex. He spoke to the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul stoned women, stoned men. And Ananias said, Do you, are you sure you want me to lay hands on him after he has done what he has done to us? And he said, yes. And he said, and then when Ananias went on Straight Street and met the Apostle Paul, who was Saul at that time, he said, brother. So he's our brother. And if y'all see him out in the street, you need to let people know, this is my brother. This is my brother. I love these t-shirts, man. Oh, I was going to say, can y'all get me one of those? And I love that kingdom mindset hat and t-shirt, you know? Like we said, we all come from a background. Y'all heard Randy Rump. Y'all heard Punchline. This is what we're all about. And if God could save us, you know he can save a whole lot of people that ain't like us. So we need to preach the gospel. 
We need to spread the word. This place needs to be full, man, with lost souls, not church people. Don't invite church people to our church. They, they need to go to their church. We need lost souls. That's what it's all about. I had a, uh, a, a brother of ours with his dad said, why we keep on preaching here in the church? We got to go out to the streets and get and get the lost souls. And you know what? There's a lot of division going on with, with, with you know, with Christianity and all these religions. And you want to know something? I take my Christianity as my relationship with God. Amen. I said, all I do is I just talk to him. I talk to him normal. And that's what it is, because there's a lot of division, a lot of people, a lot of churches don't want to accept us all tattered up and this and that. And what you got going on here with the music and this and that, which is the same thing my brother Diamond and, and, our, and our fellowship of brothers got going. I'm talking about we bang on the enemy, and it's Amen. hardcore Christian music, just Amen. like how y'all doing it. Amen. And we need more of that to bring the youth over here Amen. to salvation, bro. Amen. Oh, that's Carlos. Carlos, come on up, bro. Roosty Roo. Hello. Hello. Well, this is very unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> I just came to support my brother. Um, but speaking about what we got to speak about, this world is 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 hopeless. You know what I'm saying? And, and the Bible said these things were going to happen, right? It says that the, the, the love of people is going to wax cold. Yeah. And we see that, right? People getting beat up. People grab their phones and start recording. Oh, yeah. wow. Nobody help anybody out no more. Wow. You know, families are going hungry. People don't know what to do anymore. People are dying for real. And we have the answer. We have the answer. We know the answer. The answer is Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't care what problem you're going through in life. The answer is Jesus Christ. You could be depressed. Jesus is the answer. Amen. You don't know, but your help comes from above. That's right. Right? So if we know this, you know, um, I don't know if y'all know, um, what's the name of this magician? Either way. No, not Copperfield. No. Listen, that, that don't even matter. <laughs> <laughs> That don't even matter, right? This is what he said. He said, I used to be an atheist, right? And some dude came and gave him, spoke to him after, showed him some love, and gave him a Bible. And he said, you got to read this, right? And this is what the dude said, being an atheist and everything. He says, if you're a Christian and you know that there's a heaven and there's a hell, you must really hate somebody to know that they're heading to hell and you not do anything about that. The word of God says that they're going to know that you're a disciple of Jesus Christ by what? Your fruit. But not only by your fruit, by the way you love. Amen. So if, if we are walking with God, then we must show love everywhere we go. Amen. And showing love is not just, hey, brother, I love you. No, it's pulling out your pocket. It's dying to your life. You don't belong to you anyways. Amen. You belong to Jesus Christ, right? Amen. So you got to live like Jesus did. When he ever said, Jesus said, hey, Pastor, you know what? I've been tired. I've been ministering to 5,000 people. We just had the biggest cookout you could ever see. But I'm tired, so I'm just going to take vacation. There's no taking vacation. Even when you're on vacation, you're talking about God. And when you're on the airplane, you're speaking about God. When you're on the bus going to where you have to go, you're speaking about God. It should just come out of you because the word of God says that what you have in your heart will flow out your mouth. Amen. So just like Pastor was saying, what are we doing? Everybody here has been given a gift. Everybody here has a testimony. It's through your testimony, through the blood of the Lamb, and through the word of your testimony that we overcome. Amen. Amen. So if, if we got Christ and we're hiding it, what are we doing? And just to remind you, one day you're going to sit in front of, you're going to stand in front of the King of Kings. Yes. And he's going to ask you, what did you do with the things that I gave you? So I don't want to drag out too long. Pastor, wanted me to say something? Here you go, Pastor. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. I'm good, bro. <laughs> I might not give it back. I got I to I gotta give that away. Amen. Hey, bro. I'm telling you, you're talking to people that love that word, man. Amen. Hey, and anytime, you know, the Holy Spirit 
give you a word, bro. You let me know and come up here and you can speak to our people. The Holy Spirit always speaking. Amen. 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 You got to be available. Right? That's it. Yeah. That's it. I will listen if I told me to say something, I'll send this song. That's all. Amen. <laughs> God is good. Yes, let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters. We got a message from the Lord. We got a message from Holy Spirit spoke through us. And he's telling us what we need to do. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Send us laborers. It is God who sent the laborers. I can't do it by myself. Jesus didn't, couldn't do it by himself when he was walking on this earth. And he's God, but he was in the flesh. He was limited. He needed us, and he needs us now. We got to preach, man. You know, he not... You know, Alex said it. We're not perfect. We fall short of the glory of God. That's gospel he was preaching up here. But we got to continue to preach. We cannot let the devil hold us down because we make mistakes, because we fall short. Is when you preach that word of God, it is powerful and effective. He said, when his word goes forth, it does not return to him void, but accomplishes everything it's set out to do. You got to believe that with all your heart and all your soul. Well, I feel you. I feel you, Zeke. I feel you, brother. I feel you. I feel you. I feel spirit coming, just hitting me, hitting me, hitting me. So I don't know about you, but I'm going to serve my Lord and Savior until the day he take me off this earth. Because we are in a war, a spiritual war. Because our fight is not against flesh and blood, but spiritual forces in, he in the heavenly realms. So you can't fight this battle in the flesh. You got to fight it in the spirit. You got to forgive. You got to love. And you got to forget. You can't hold. You see what my brother Alex said? He said, I'm been, I, I seek revenge. I have a, re a vindictive spirit. He said, I'm working on that. He said, yeah, people tell me, uh, let God and let go. But he said, I can't do that. I, I'm fighting that. So don't get him wrong. Because he, he ain't been delivered from that yet. <laughs> <laughs> you heard what he said. I, I'm trying to get delivered from it. <laughs> so I'm here to tell you. We were texting. I'll text, I text you about 1230 in the morning saying, hey, we on. You know? That's where I'm at. I don't know where you guys are at. I can't worry about where you guys are at. I'm in a fight. I don't come up here trying to impress you. I don't want you going there saying, oh, I love my pastor. He can preach. I can't preach. It's Holy Spirit that gives me this. I'm a nobody. Apart from Christ, I can't do nothing. I share with y'all my testimony. I share with you how I was in high school. I didn't care. I just wanted to get by. And I'm suffering for it later. But my wife, she was the one that was smart. So thank God he gave me some brains. Because <laughs> we're one. Her brain is my brain. So I'm here to tell you, I know. I know where I was. She knows. I tell y'all stories, what God has done in my life. I told you how she was driving the getaway car when I was stealing tires from a burning building and got the wrong tires. <laughs> I jacked up, bro. But look what God has done in our lives. And some of you, y'all got some history. But look what God has done in your life. My brother Ron, y'all know a story, but I ain't gonna tell this whole story now. I'm gonna let him tell it to you. But we had to have Frank go out there to Texas and get him. I almost kidnap him. And Jay said, if you're trying to go back to Texas, you're going to have to hear from me. So we got, we got stuff that's in our lives, man, that the enemy is trying to destroy us. The, the, the devil comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, he only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's our enemy. And we got to fight the good fight. Amen? Amen? So with that being said, I'm going to send you guys home. Tell some people about, tell some lost souls about Jesus. 
We're not going to have an altar call because you know why? Ain't no unsaved people here. Who are we going to do altar call We need to bring lost souls to the church. And listen, I'm gonna, he said, my sheep, hear my voice. So I'm going to tell you, when you go to lost sheep, if they're not, if they go, it's either going to be goat or sheep. If they go, they're not going to hear the, the shepherd's voice. But if they sheep, they're going to say, like Ron, when I went to Ron, he said, what does that take to be saved? I said, well, the Bible said, he said, I don't need to hear all the verses. I just know what you need to do to be saved. I wasn't religious to say, well, you need to hear uh, Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. For God said, I said, just pray this prayer with me. And it changed his life at that moment. Amen. So we can't be religious. We can't be fake. I ain't trying to impress nobody. Y'all know that. I'm a warrior. I fight the good fight. Every day. Every day. Every day. I don't take off. Every day. Every minute of the day, I'm fighting. But thank God for his grace and his mercy and his love. So if you love, as my brother, what's your name again, brother? Carlos. Carlos, as my brother Carlos said, our brother Carlos said, we can't take off. We can't vacation. There's people that say, well, I go to church every Sunday. I could take one. Jesus would not say that. And I tell people that all the time, my brother. I say, how would Jesus say, I don't, I don't need to go to church today. I'm going to relax. I'm going to sleep. No, we can't, we, can't, we can't have that mindset. Let the mind of Christ also be in us. Alex said it. I'm listening. I'm listening to the Holy Spirit. I don't know about y'all, but I'm listening to God. And I hear what he said. He said, I'm, I'm, I'm no longer me. It's, it's all about God now. It's about Holy Spirit in me now. And that's what the verse he gave me. He said, you've been crucified with Christ. You no longer live. But by faith, Christ now lives in you. Amen. There's some, some significance to these tattoos, too. We got the, the superficial version of it, but when we have you again, we're gonna put you on the other side. We're gonna let you really get down, okay? When we have our next smash event, Alex, Alex need to give the word, and we just give a powerful five-minute word. People change, but we don't want you holding back nothing. Amen. Let's close. Kevin, you had something to say? Yeah, that God is on the side project. Be, yeah, amen. Amen. My brother, what's your name? Kenzie. Kenzie. Ken Kenzie? Yeah. I went to a school called Kenzie. In Philly. Amen. You'll close us in prayer, bro? Yes, sir. I don't need a mic. Right in me, 
you, Lord. I want more. I hunger, Lord. I hunger, Lord. I hunger, Lord. I thirst, Lord. Father, Lord, we just pour out your love over this place. The love of a father. Thank you, Jesus. To the fatherless. Yes. To the motherless. Yes. To the sons and daughters. Yes. To the single women. To the single mothers. Yes. Let your fatherhood just flow. Let your love just break out right now. The love of the Father is here. Let your presence just fill them. Father Lord, I declare healing over the family. Over the families who've lost a brother. I declare that you heal their hearts. That he is sitting in glory right now. In your presence, God. Our brother is sitting next to you, oh Lord. Not because I said it, but because he gave his life to you. God, right now, Heal the families and heal their hearts. I speak in reverence and fear of the Lord. So let it be you who speak and not I. Let it be you who minister and not I. We humble ourselves and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Amen.